if you give people information and you do a lot of teaching, in my opinion, you bore them. Hey, podcast listener, you're about to discover insider tips, tricks, and secrets to making more sales and converting more prospects into customers with email marketing. For more information about the email marketing podcast or the autoresponder guy, go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Hey, everybody, it's John McIntyre here, the autoresponder guy, and it's time for episode 26 of the Email Marketing Podcast, where we talk about the top tips, tricks, and secrets for making more sales and growing your revenue with email marketing. Today, I'll be talking to Richard Geller about a powerful persuasion technique that shakes people to their core. Now, religious leaders use this. Guys like Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, uh, cult leaders, politicians, sports superstars, they're all using this powerful persuasion technique to basically influence people and get people to think and believe certain things so that they take action on certain things. Smart marketers use this all the time and they put a lot of time into developing this skill, right? It's not a button that you can just press and and it works. You have to develop it. And in this podcast episode, you're going to find out what this technique is and how you can develop it as well because it's not that hard if you're willing to put the work in. It is, I feel like hands down, one of the highest points in your marketing. It's going to transform your email, uh, your websites, your blog posts, any direct mail you do any sort of marketing you do, the more you understand this technique, the more powerful your marketing will be. Now, to get the show notes for this episode of the Email Marketing Podcast, go to dropdeadcopy.com slash EP26. Now, instead of reading out the five-star iTunes reviews today, I'm going to go to some listener questions. But in case you wanted to leave a review, go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Uh, there'll be a link there to the iTunes store. Click that and uh, leave a review and I'll read it out on the next episode. Now, I have five questions today that I'm going to try and get to really quickly. So here goes. Question number one is, how do you start building a list today? List building is just about traffic. You need you need to have a squeeze page and then you need to get people to that squeeze page. The question is, do you do free or paid? Free is search traffic, basically. It's free in terms of money, but it costs time and energy. So unless you want to spend the time and energy, you want to do paid traffic. And that means AdWords, Facebook, solo ads, all sorts of different traffic methods, which I can't cover right now. But what you want to do is figure out whether you want to do free or paid and then go start looking at uh, where your customers, where your prospects hang out and how can you put an ad in front of them and get them to click. It. Question number two, when do you recommend using an autoresponder campaign? Uh, pretty much anytime you have a website, right? So the way I frame this up is that an autoresponder builds a bridge from your prospect to your product. So a lot of prospects aren't going to want to buy on the, fir- the first time they find your product. They're going to get you to your sales page, to your website. They, they, maybe they want a website done. This works for services. But a lot of, most of them aren't going to want to buy on the first shot, right? They're going to need to hear from you, I think it's seven times. There's a rule, five, six, seven times before they trust you enough or before they're ready for whatever reason to purchase from you. So an autoresponder campaign is, is for any time you have a website and have a product to sell and have prospects to sell it to. It's really very, It's really that simple. Question number three, how would you change your email sequence for a launch instead of for your routine list communication? Okay, so as you know, I send out daily emails to my list. Every email promotes the McIntyre method. And then what I've done recently is I've closed the McIntyre method and then opened it for, say, a week at a time or a few days at a time. And during those times, I sent extra emails. So there are some key elements of any launch that go out with these emails. I send the broadcasts out on top of the autoresponder emails. Now, each email before the launch is basically pre-framing, uh, which means that I'm trying to control the frame in someone's mind before I give them an opportunity to buy. So this is things like uh, creating a hero story where there's a character, sometimes me, sometimes a customer or, or client, uh, that has used the information and has changed their life in some way. Another technique is creating an enemy, which might be uh, competitors. It might be the way most people do marketing. The, it might be the get-rich-quick marketers. And so every email does this, and it's, it's way too big of a topic to get into right now, but understand that every email before the launch is pre-framing and then during the actual launch what I try and do is I try and hit every reason why someone might buy so there's the obvious ones the obvious benefits that you can think of but there are the people who are worried about the price you might give them a $1 trial the people who have objections and then you send them a fact email and so every email covers a different base and the idea is by sending all these different emails you're t- hitting the subjects the, the product from every different angle so you're going to get the most amount of people to buy question number four why do you do what you're doing 
Now, I'm assuming this question is about uh, the email marketing stuff, the business. And uh, honestly, I find it very exciting. It's very challenging at times as well. But uh, mostly, it just gives me the freedom to pursue whatever life I choose. Uh, you know, most of you know that I'm, I'm in Thailand right now. I'm in northern Thailand. I've been here a year. I'm going to be here for a lot longer. In February next year, I'm going to move down to the tropical islands like Phuket, somewhere like that, where there'll be, you know, tropical paradise with, with uh, coconuts, white sandy beaches, all that stuff. And uh, none of that would be possible without this kind of business or way of uh, earning money. So it's a, it's, it's a fantastic way. It's very fulfilling too because I get to see clear results when I help people. They come back to me and they say, thanks, here's what happened. You know, I made this much money or I got this much clients or, or, or I got this feedback from people and, and just thank you so much for doing it. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Now, question number five, the last question is, what's your process for writing about other people's companies? Now, this is a great question because the answer is going to help you go and write for your own company or go and write for you know, your clients if you have them. Basically, you need to get to know your prospect and product. That's what I do. I send them a survey uh, with, that asks very specific questions on who their prospect is and what the product is. Because what I do with the autoresponder is I build a bridge from the prospect to the product. So at any given time, the prospect is still a prospect and he hasn't bought the product and there's a whole bunch of reasons why he might not have done that. So the goal of the autoresponder is to build the steps, build the, the, the parts of the bridge so that he can walk over that bridge and buy that product and become a satisfied customer. So that's pretty much it. You have to know the prospect and know the product and then the autoresponder just builds that bridge. Very simple. You just fill in that fill in that path. So I think that's enough. Now let's go get into this interview and talk about this persuasion technique uh, that is just extremely powerful and I use it all the time in my own emails and you might know what it is. Let's go find out. It's John McIntyre here, the autoresponder guy. I'm here with Richard Geller, an internet marketer. Uh, Richard came to me via uh, Andre Chaperone, another email marketer. A lot of you know from uh, Autoresponder Madness. And uh, we jumped on a Skype call to chat about marketing and email and all that kind of stuff, And as you do. And I was really impressed with Richard's marketing job. So he really knows his stuff. He's got a business in the men's relationship space, which uh, we might get into. It's a very interesting product and angle what they're doing. They're doing an absolute ton of traffic and emails a huge part, as far as I know, in their marketing process. Process. So I kind of brought him on to find out what he's doing because I'm sure a lot of what he's doing can be applied in your own business. Uh, you, you know, if you're listening to this, so we'll get into that in just a minute. So it's uh, great to have Richard here. How are you going today, Richard? Hey, it's going absolutely great. Thanks, John. How about with you? Oh, it's going going fantastic. I uh, just got to the office. It's a good day. <laughs> well, it's a nice life, and I've been doing emails, uh, email marketing for a long, long time, uh, many, many years, and I can make a lot of money just sending out an email once a day, and that's a great way of living sometimes when you just want to kick back and send an email once a day, sometimes twice a day, sometimes five times a day, but generally once once a day. Right, right. Absolutely. It's kind of the, uh, forget about the whole four-hour workweek lifestyle. The new thing is the email lifestyle. Yeah, the e- I like that, the email lifestyle. Absolutely. <laughs> and actually, I'm in several different niches, and I do some things that are very different from everybody else. And one of the things that – so I'm in, I'm in this make money niche. I'm in the men's relationship niche. And I also spend a lot of money in paying for emails. So I don't spam people. What I do is I pay people, and they send out email solo ads to their list for me, and I build my list that way. So I, I use email in a lot of different ways. Okay, fantastic. So before we get into the email stuff specifically, give us a bit of a background background on you know who is Richard Geller what you know what sort of stuff you're doing just so people can get yeah. an idea of who you are yeah, great. Um, I really learned how to sell when I was like 18 years old, which was a lot of years ago. And I think you really learn when you learn how to sell in the real world, you can learn how to sell on the internet. I've been internet marketing for a long time and probably the last seven, eight years, mostly in real estate, business opportunities, and men's relationships most recently through my own publishing company. Okay. Okay, great. And it sounds like you're doing a lot of email stuff. Yeah, email is a central core of what we do. So we build lists with email, we send email to our people, and then we pay for email to be sent out by other people. And I don't, you know, email is still the best way and probably will be for the foreseeable future of building prospect uh, interest and getting them converted into customers and getting customers to buy more stuff. Definitely. Okay, great. Now, so what we're going to talk about today is this can be applied to, say, you know, make money online stuff. You're doing it in the men's relationship space. Do you think email marketing works for every type of business online? Any type of business. And broadly defined, there would be some businesses where you're going to want to uh, sell a high ticket product, let's say a very expensive trading course to for financial people. Or maybe you want to build a relationship with somebody and sell them a ten thousand or twenty thousand dollar product. Or you might want to be selling a twenty seven or thirty seven dollar product. So either way, what I'm going to show you is going to work very, very powerfully and very potently in any of those situations. Great. Okay, well, let's get into it. All right, what's the 40,000 feet overview of what you're going to share with us? 
Well, I'm going to give you four different uh, four different things that I think are very, very important. And it's all built around something that I noticed in my selling days that works fabulously well, so much better than anything else. And I'm always amazed that very few people are doing it. And um, if I tell you something, if I try to teach you or give you information, what's that really worth, John? I mean, it might be great information, but we all get so much information there as you go to Google, you get a million websites come up for anything that you can type in. So... Really, people aren't looking for information. They're really looking for stories. They're looking to hear about how you were successful with something or how you overcame something or how you're like them and what you did in order to be where you are today. So stories is probably the most underutilized method of using email. And it's just, it's just too bad because stories can absolutely get your point across without ever teaching anything or boring people at all. Mm. And if you give people information and you do a lot of teaching, in my opinion, you bore them. So what I do is I tell stories. So we're going to talk about stories. Secondly, I'm going to address this thing about, well, should I just do content or should I ask for the order? And you'll hear my opinion about whether you should give content sometimes and ask for the order other times or whether you should always be asking for the order. I want to talk about something that's very, very interesting about repair and improvement versus opportunity. And then I want to talk about the predominant emotion that you want to create in an email in order to get a result. Like so that. stories are the, the key really to making a lot of money in email and in selling and everything else. So we use stories for, for example, we might tell a little story about how we were, uh, here's an example in my men's business. I may tell a story about how I got laid and how I, um, you have to be careful. You're not using spam words in email, but I, you know, how I overcame this obstacle to get this woman into bed and what we did. And I don't have to tell my uh, readers anything else. I don't have to teach them anything. I just have to do that. And then that generates a powerful emotion, the desire to do what I did. And then uh, I have what I call the turn, where I then turn it towards the end of the email, turn it into a, a pitch for the order. And that's a very common way of using email. If I'm in my real estate business, I might want to talk about a method of, let's say, um, getting into apartment building investing that I'm trying out and something that I'm doing, and then there's a turn, and then I would pitch them on a, on a course, that either an affiliate course or my own course for buying apartment buildings or investing or being a finder for apartment buildings. So there's always going to be a story about something that I did, hmm. then the, what I call the turn, T-U-R-N, the turn, where we then ask for the, the order. Okay. That's basically my pattern. So I never bore people. I never confuse them. I'm always giving them an entertainment and a story in my emails. Okay, great. So uh, I love this story thing. I think about you know the turn. You know, I call it the seg. You kind of you get this story and you're getting their attention for a certain type of you know thing or feeling, and then you're basically fitting in your pitch in there. But uh, I think it'd be really helpful just to hear you give a quick example of you know make up a story. And I've done this before with people, and I find it usually opens their eyes. Give us like a quick. It doesn't have to be like a full email, but start with like a bit of a story and then do the turn and then turn it into a pitch. Show us how you do it. Yeah. So, for example, I'm going to be writing about a uh, product that, let's see what I can do. Okay. I'm going to be writing about a, a, a course for people who might want to get into apartment investing without any money. So, I'm going to talk about uh, how I started out with nothing and how I met a mentor who let me carry his briefcase for him. And in return, he would take me around his buildings and show me the inside secrets of how he built his apartment empire. And he built an empire with 14 large apartment buildings. He makes tons of money. And he shocked me by saying that he did it with no money. And then I might talk about in that email, I say, now imagine if you could get you could carry this millionaire's briefcase and you could get all this without having to do all that work. What I did is we packaged all that into this course. And what you can do is you don't have to carry anybody's briefcase and spend the years that I spent. You can get it all right here. Just go here for a trial or go watch this video. That would be an example. And what I'm doing is I'm always either um, I'm using my stories. I may um, handle an objection that I know comes up. For example, I may tell a story about somebody got I got this knowledge of how to do apartment building investing, and I spent uh, two hundred thousand dollars, you know, because I had to work for nothing and I had to invest and lose money and all that. And so that's pre-handling the objection of this course that I may be selling for a certain, let's say, two hundred dollars. So. The the price that I paid is very high compared to the two hundred dollars, so it makes the price of the course very palatable. So that's what I call pre-handling an objection. Price is always an objection. So by showing a high price, it puts this into perspective and makes it seem very inexpensive for them. So that's an example of a story. 
that I would use to prehandle an objection. Uh, or I might um, want to just show them a story that shows the outcome that they desire, how I started like they did and got the outcome that they want to get. Uh, or I might show a story where it shows me being very poor and having $70,000 in credit card debt and my wife was going to leave me. And that would be a story that would be building rapport by showing them that I'm like they are and I started with it how they did. And so I'm meeting them where they are today. And I might even make that story go over several emails, John. Sometimes I'll do several days of email. I'll end it with like a cliffhanger, you know, with some terrible situation. And tomorrow I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to tell them something else. So, so they, they want to tune in the next day, so to speak. Okay. Okay. So I think what people need to understand is that like these stories, you can go as, I mean, it's, it's as simple as, you know, you imagine that you're at the bar or a picnic or, you know, you meet a friend that you haven't seen in a while and you tell them a story. So, so, so the other day, the craziest thing happens and, you know, we're at so-and-so and, and uh, my buddy James was talking to me about X and you kind of just build it like this. And what you're really trying to do is get a certain quality of their attention, which is their attention for a, basically, their attention for a specific topic, in this case, say real estate investing. And then you just want to, you know, get their attention, get them pumped up, get them really interested. So they're like, they want to know what's next. And then you basically do a very natural, and it's very easy to do and to get the hang of it, a natural slide into this pitch where it's kind of like, well, yes. we do have this product. Yeah. And I call that the turn. And exactly right. And the turn is where we turn right into the, the pitch. And you can, and you can connect one thing to another thing that way. And, you know, it's really a kind of a fun thing. If you want to do a story, it could be about a celebrity. It could be about, uh, Donald Trump and one of the deals that he just did. And then we turn it right into a pitch for the, for this course. So that could be a, uh, it doesn't have to be a story about you. It could be about celebrities. It could be about a news situation. It could be about a holiday. It could be about almost anything. Um, it could be about a student. I do a lot of stories about students and I will say they're a composite student. And so I can make up stories and, you know, I say it reflects the experiences of a number of my students. So I'm not lying but it gives me a lot of latitude because my students have a lot of different stories and I can really focus on something, kind of put it together and build it without it being fiction. And that yeah. really helps because I can, I can come up with almost anything that I want and it's very powerful. And what I look at every day is I look at reader, readership, open rates, click-through rates. I don't like to see open rates falling for very long. I like to see that I'm entertaining people at the very least. I like them to be buying and I look at my sales, but I look at open rates because uh, open rates are a proxy for how well you're doing with your stories and your entertainment. The biggest mistake marketers are making is they bore people. They give them information in their emails. And they don't entertain them. So their, their open rates fall, and they end up with a list that is just not unresponsive, and people aren't even reading their email. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think that uh, reminds me of that. Though. I don't know who said it. It's like the kind of rule of marketing is don't be boring. Right. Don't be boring. Okay. Yeah. And what I, a lot of people, I, I promise I would talk about this briefly. A lot of people are believing they have to really cultivate a lead and build it up. If you're selling a high price product, you can't be pitching people all the time. But what I really want to do is I want to sell the click. I want to get them clicking on every email. I never want to send an email where I don't get a call to action of some kind. So if I'm selling a, a, something that's expensive and I had to buy a lead and I'm, I'm let's say I'm selling a $10,000 product, I'm not going to be selling that in every email, but I then would write blog posts or I, I'd send them to a YouTube video. It could be someone else's video, but I will always try to get them to click. Why? Because I want to train them to do what I tell them to do. And if they are rewarded for clicking, if they see an entertaining video, even if it's not mine, or they read a blog post that's entertaining, that is mine. So I'm always having a call to action. But with low price products, I'm always asking to buy something. A higher price stuff, I may create a lead. I may be doing a cultivation or farming process. Okay. But for the lower price products in the markets I'm in with low price products, I'm really always selling something in an email. Okay. And so I don't actually ask them to buy like in the subject line. I'm always providing entertainment. And then I ask them to buy after the turn. All right. So this is a bit like the, not, well, this is more number two, the content versus pitch. If it's a lower price product, you can do a lot more pitching with the stories, but if it's a higher price, you want to be spending more time just kind of fostering and building that relationship with some content. But it's got to be that right sort of content where it's not just how-to information, it's fun content. You're just not selling in every email. Yeah, if it's an expensive thing, let's say, and I do, I sell some really expensive things. Let's say I'm selling something that might be $10,000. I'm not going to sell it through the email clearly, but I might be cultivating them to become a lead for a high-priced webinar. Right. Uh, then I'm, I'm going to still be entertaining and I'm still going to be talking about 
the desired outcome through these stories. And then I'm always going to have a call to action, which might be just going to a blog page that I've written that has some aspect of the story that continues or some, some, some part of it because I want to get them to do something that I ask them to do. I want to establish control and give them a reward for clicking so that when the time comes to sell a high-priced webinar, they have already been in a, a yes pattern of clicking and being rewarded, and they're going to go do that also. They're going to do the, the next step and buy the high-priced webinar. So that's how I, I'm always trying to sell the click and always monetize in some way. I don't ever believe in just giving information out. And when I look at, like, let's say I want to so-called teach somebody something, what I do is I kind of come up with a story for it, and I don't teach them. I just tell them the story. So much better. Isn't that how we learn everything with these stories? Absolutely. We don't learn very well when we just, yeah, absolutely. So I'm always monetizing. Basically, I'm always monetizing. I'm selling with a story. I'm always going for the click. And even if it's going to be a cultivation process for high price product, I'm always going to sell a click that may be to some kind of a reward payoff type thing, like a blog post or an, or a uh, a YouTube video or something. So I'm always doing that. I'm never not monetizing my list. Always monetizing. Right. Then something that I found that's revolutionary, John. It's revolutionary because it's um, it's so incredible. And what I what I do, and I'll and I'll tell you how I came up with it. But um, what I do when I'm creating an email is I decide on the predominant emotion that I want to create as a result of the email because it's really not about about uh, rational things and information. It's about emotion. And there's two emotions that are most basic. There's either the emotion that pulls you to something, let's call it, it could be greed or desire or lust or something like that. And then there's the emotion that wants to make you pull away from something, which could be fear or pain. So you may be selling a low price product like a, a supplement. It may be an initially a low price, but you want to establish a continuous stream of orders for that. And you have to decide each email, is it going to be the attraction to something they want or is it going to be repulsion from something that they're trying to get away from? Is it going to be pain or pleasure, basically, fear or greed? Mm -hmm. You decide on that. And um, I think that most of the time it's better to start with what people are thinking about, which is problems, repairing their problems, fixing their problems, improving on a problem. But then that's not really what gets people to buy. That's only what attracts them. What attracts them is opportunity. So we start with what we call repair and improvement language. For example, uh, here's what to do if you have a headache or uh, guy, if you need more testosterone, here's what you might think about. So those are all, those are like problems. Mm -hmm. But then when we get right into the body of the email, we're going to talk about opportunity. We're going to talk about meeting women, building muscles, getting the things that you want by being more uh, motivated, more aggressive. So we're going to be then talking in terms of opportunity language. And yeah. I think it's a big mistake marketers make when they talk about repair and improvement and they don't talk about opportunity language. So mm -hmm. you really want to dive into your product or service and figure what's the real core emotion that you want people to feel when they read your email. And it should be something that's probably to do with, uh, you know, uh, have it getting more sex, getting more wealth, being happier, right. and you kind of work from there. So I'm okay. always deciding on that when I write an email. You mentioned this on the phone call uh, when we spoke a couple of weeks ago about this exact issue that it's very easy to go after the problems, you know, how to fix this, and you know how to get rid of your stomach pain, how to get rid of pain, 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 or all that kind of stuff. But that the long-term business model or the long-term business opportunity is really in selling to people who go after opportunities because they're going to keep on buying. Whereas with someone with a problem, they solve their problem and then they're done. If they even solve it at all, then most of them... Yeah, and, and we talked about that. They don't necessarily ever solve their problem, but they tend not to be good repeat buyers. So people who are repeat buyers tend to be people that are uh, what I call there's dopamine driven. They're driven by by greed or desire or an emotion to move towards something rather than moving away from something. Mm. So, but, but at the same time, when you, um, when you talk to people, their, their brains are filled with their problems for that day, with their pain and their difficulties. You know, they have this fight with their wife and they're worried about the credit card bill they don't know how to pay. And they've got this thing at work with somebody they're in a, in a problem with. And so they're going around all day long thinking about their problems. So in order to get their attention, You've got to enter that conversation in their mind, which is a conversation about problems. But once you do that, which could be in your subject line and could be the very beginning of the email, once you do that, you then have to move it right into the opportunity, into the positive, into the desire, into the lust, into the greed, into the, the you know, drawing them towards something. That way you will attract people 
that are good repeat buyers, and they're the kind of people you want on your list. So it's kind of like the problem agitate solution. So you know, I'd bring up the problem, I'd make it sound really, you know, make it worse, kind of rub it in their face, and then I would offer them the solution, and the solution is that opportunity. Yeah. So let's take a concrete example. I'm gonna make one up. Let's say I'm selling a heartburn supplement, something for acid reflux. I'd be lying awake, awake at night, and, and and in my stomach, and I couldn't sleep, and and I had to take all these pills, and they didn't work. I found that. Uh, you know, finally something that really worked. And so now as a result of that, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going out with this really pretty girl now and I'm, we, I order the big steak or I'm ordering the pasta and I'm ordering the, ch- the, the chili that I love and, and I'm having a great time. I love life's improved and I don't have to worry about what I'm eating. So that's an example of, you know, it's a bad one, but it's an example of opportunity language in a repair or fix it type of a product. Okay. And it sounds weird, but when you start anchoring your product to this positive outcome like dating a beautiful woman or what something you have a dominant emotion an emotion of lust a desire that you're anchoring with your product and no you're no longer in the realm of repair and improvement you're now in the realm of opportunity and that's the kind of you know that gets people to buy and it gets people to buy who buy again and again and then so what about the last point this issue of i think you mentioned it real quickly before emotion and bringing up that emotion what are some ways for people to really think about what emotion they want to create and then how to bring that up in their emails well the the fact is that um the the two basic things that people deal with is uh is dopamine and cortisol which are hormones in the brain dopamine is the hormone of want always wanting something, always wanting something new. So if you're going to talk to someone about in their email, you should always be talking about something new. It's got to be new and different. That's what gets people's attention. That's why they read your email. A lot of guys actually make money pitching different products and they pitch every day something else. And the reason they get any people reading them at all in their emails is because their people are clicking for something new and people are really interested in saying new even if you know they're bored at work they might even buy a 27 dollar product just because they're kind of bored so the one emotion is this dopamine is this you know something new something unusual something different something really funny or um not sad sad doesn't sell but um something with some strong emotion of greed or lust or want in it and then the other one is going to be one that really brings the pain to them, the, which is the, the hormone of stress, which is cortisol, where you really want to paint the picture of being in pain. Uh, and you will turn to opportunity when you turn for them to uh, when you pitch them to buy something. But you can really bring the pain forward and really talk about pain. So those would be the primary dom- predominant emotion that we would want to generate, you know, usually one than the other in an email. And uh, you do that with a story. And people put themselves in the story. They feel the pain. They feel the, the desire, the lust, the greed. And then they want to buy that product or click on the link. And they're in a good mood to, to go further to order. Fantastic. All right, so we got the four points there. We got stories, we got content versus pitch, and it really depends on the price of the product, the problem versus opportunity, and then this issue of generating, you know, talking about, you know, the dopamine versus cortisol and how to create those two things. So we're right on time there, Richard. So uh, before we go, well, thanks. really appreciate it. Thanks for your time coming on here. Uh, but before we go, give yourself uh, you know, a plug or tell people where they can find you and learn more about you, and then we'll say goodbye. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that. No, I love talking about this stuff, and I've learned a lot from you, John. I think your, your stuff is, has been great. I've gone through your course. It's the, the email course has been really, really good, and um, I'm just grateful to be able to you know, put something back in, and I have nothing to pitch, but I'm really glad that we could do this interview. Great. Okay. Fantastic. That's wonderful. All right, man. Well, thanks again. All right. Thanks very much. Take care. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you want to discover more insider tips, tricks, and secrets about driving sales with email marketing, sign up for daily email tips from the autoresponder guy. Go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Sign up, confirm your email address, and I'll send you daily emails on how to improve your email marketing and make more sales via email. You'll find out why open rates don't matter and the seven-letter word that underlies all effective marketing and much more. Oh,